Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mountain Academy. I'm Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video provides practice calculating the minimum sample size needed to estimate a confidence interval for proportions. Let's get started. So with us look at an uh, example problem involving online clothing sales. Many companies are interested in knowing the percentage of adults who buy clothing online. This is especially true if the companies are selling clothing. So the question is how many adults must be surveyed in order to be 95% confident that the sample percentage is an error by no more than three percentage points. So let's step through this piece by piece to show you how this can be solved. First, we want to answer by using a recent U.S. Census Bureau statistic that 66% of adults buy clothing online. And then we're going to answer without any prior knowledge of a possible value of the proportion. So first, uh, we're going to uh, use the statistic of 66% of adults buy clothing. So how many adults must be surveyed in order to be 95% confident that the sample percentage is an error by no more than three percentage points. In fact, you know what? That's a good idea. Go ahead and stop the video now and see if you can solve this on your own. Then come back and we'll walk through and see how you did. Okay, let's check out how to work this. So, first we're going to identify the variables we have from the problem statement. So, our probability of success from that Census Bureau statistic 66% of adults are buying clothing online. That means that our probability of failure is going to be 34%. Just subtract that 66% from one. Our alpha level is uh, 95%. That means, excuse me, our alpha level is one minus the confidence level and our confidence level is 95%. So our alpha is 5% and that means that our critical value z-score is going to be 1.96. Margin of error, three percentage points. Okay, Keep in mind, it didn't say three points. It says three percentage points. So now we've got everything we need to calculate our sample size. So we substitute into our equation and punch out the answer. So here's our sample size equation. We substitute the values we have into that equation, punch that on our calculator, we get 957.84. In all cases, we want to round up, so we're going to go to 958. This, then, is the minimum sample size that we need to be 95% confident within three percentage points of the true percentage. Now, the second part of this problem asked us to answer without any prior knowledge of a possible value of the proportion. So, in that case, we're going to go through the same steps that we did before, but we're going to have a slight difference in that we don't know what p hat is, so therefore we don't know what q hat is, because we don't have any prior knowledge of a possible value of the proportion. So, in that case, we're going to just assume that the product of p hat q hat is 25%. In this case, we have the same confidence level, which gives us the same significance level, alpha, 5%, which, of course, then leads to our critical value z-score, 1.96. Again, our margin of error, 3 percentage points. So now we're going to substitute those values into our sample size equation. Here's our sample size equation. We substitute the values in, and out comes the final value of 1,068. Notice how much significantly higher this sample size is than what we saw previously, all because we didn't know what p hat or q hat were. So it really does make a difference. If you can know what that proportion is, it makes a difference. It helps you to reduce that sample size. And that's real important when you're getting out 
doing something like this in the real world because each one of these people you have to sample represents time, represents energy, represents manpower, represents money, represents all other kinds of resources. So the more you can minimize that, the more you can save and get by with less. Let's look at another problem before we wrap up our mini lecture today. Using the POTUS data file in our StatCrunch group, we find that 47.4% of 38 U.S. presidents were taller than their electoral opponent. So if the data in our file is a sample, and that's not unreasonable since our data file does not include every U.S. president that has served in office, what is the 95% confidence interval estimate for the population proportion of presidents who are taller than their electoral opponents? So here we actually have a statistic to go off of for our proportion of success. So that's going to be 0.474. We can then subtract that from 1 to get Q hat, 0.526. Our critical value Z score, 1.96 comes from our confidence interval estimate of 95%. So we put that into StatCrunch, the 95% and out comes 1.96 for our critical value z-score. We now have what we need to calculate our margin of error. So here's our margin of error equation. We substitute in the values we have and that comes out with a margin of error of 0.081. So now we start by writing the general format for a confidence interval. We substitute those values in. So we're going to subtract on the left, add on the right, punch the numbers out, and we get 0 0.393 to 0.555. This then is our 95% confidence interval estimate. Does it appear that greater height is an advantage for presidential candidates? Okay, well, there's the CI right there. Look at it and tell me what do you think. Does it appear that greater height is an advantage for presidential elections? Well, looking at this, I hope you said not really. Here's why that's the answer. If height were an advantage, then taller candidates should be winning elections more than 50% of the time. But most of our CI actually resides below 50%. So because of that, it doesn't appear that height is giving anyone any particular advantage, at least as far as it comes to winning the election. That brings us to the end of our mini lecture. I hope you found it helpful. You can find more mini lectures for this and other courses at AspireMountainAcademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.